the Sahrawi students choose to work peacefully in defending our rights for the referendum that the United Nations promised us. But despite of this, those who take part in peaceful demonstrations are far too often victims of human rights violations. This, um, I'm going to now um, show you some, the photo, some photos of my friends. Most of the photos are taken by me. The Sahrawi students that have been um, attacked by the Moroccan police just because they uh, demanded their legitimate right in peaceful demonstrations at the university. Uh, his name is uh, Elwali Qadimi, and um, we had a demonstration on the 14th of May last year, and the police stormed the university. They threw him together with ano another student from the fourth floor of the campus, and he is now ha half handicapped. This is my best friend, Sultana Khaya. We were participating in a peaceful demonstration in 2007. And the Moroccan police stormed the university, beat us so harshly to the extent that she lost her eye. And this is um, some other photos shows how students are being tortured. And um, most of them are my friends. This is me after a demonstration and after um, brutal beatings by the Moroccan police. Important, important organization, organizations have been very concerned over the human rights situation in Western Sahara. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is one of them. In 2006, they wrote that the Sahrawi people is not only denied their right to self-determination, but equally the right to express their views about the issue, to create association defending their rights and to hold assemblies to make their rights known. Human Rights Watch, in December 2009, documented that there are arbitrary arrests, unfair trials, restrictions on associations and meetings, and police violence and harassment that goes unpunished. In January this year, the organization Freedom House named the, occupied, named, sorry, named the occupied part of Western Sahara as one of the most repressive societies in the world, on the same level as Zimbabwe. Amnesty International regularly issues reports of unfair trials against Sahrawis. I want to show some more photos of other people in Western Sahara who have suffered such human rights violations. Um, this is a high school student who was tortured because he attended the demonstration in his school. And um, um, this photo is of, um, of my friend. She's a 16 years old girl. And um, I cannot show her face since she has gone through a very horrible experience. Um, she's my little friend, sis, um, friend and she, um, she used to visit us to have dinner and tea. Uh, on Sunday, last Sunday, she was in her way to her school and the Moroccan police kidnapped her from the street. They put um, dirty cloth on her face and um, um, they, they raped her. So uh, it's really a very hard um, thing that can ever happen to a young girl. This guy, his name is Salik Saidi, and um, he was taken to the police station where they poured benzene on him and put fire during the interrogations. And this is my little sister, 14 years old. Last year, I mean last time in 2007, while I was here in Norway telling about human rights violations, the Moroccan police, to revenge me, they, they stormed my house, detained my mother, my sister, and my little sister, tortured them, mainly because I am defending the human rights. And um, 
this is the black prison of El Ayun, and many Sahrawis political prisoners spent several years here in this horrible situation. Those who speak out for the Sahrawis' rights are constantly under surveillance. Tuesday last week, the day before I left to Norway, Moroccan civilian police was hanging around my house. That is the most normal way of surveillance. But it, also, but it also takes place in many other ways. It has even ha happened that when a Moroccan student I know was interrogated, the police played for him a conversation that they, ha um, that they had recorded of me speaking on the phone with him. Harassment and beatings are also a normal way of intelligence work. About two weeks ago, two of my friends, both teenage students, were beaten by the police during interrogations. And they were both asked about my program here in Norway. When the Sahrawi students managed to finish studies and return home to Western Sahara, it's hard to get a job. And for those who get one, it's difficult to keep it if you want to be politically active. Many Sahrawis who receive foreign delegations to Western Sahara are pressured by the police, both before and after they receive visits. One of the pre pressure methods is by, is by making sure that the Sahrawis are left without work or that their post is moved to somewhere in Morocco. My sister lost her job last year after, after having met with a foreign delegation. Her boss was forced by the police to fire her. The two people in my small family who were important sources of income both lost their jobs after pressure from the Moroccan authorities. <laughs> 